I'm George and I'm making my way over to Kaka Hill to Golden Bay. This vibrant and artistic community is a must for lovers of nature, beaches and, in our case, distilled spirits. We're heading to Kiwi Spirits to meet master distiller Terry. Hiya, George. Hello, Terry. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. I heard you were coming. Come on in, George, and I'll, I'll pour you just a drink and I'll take a little walk and show you what we're doing here. Sounds great. So This is your cellar door. It's very well stocked. Well, I know, it's every boy's dream to be stuck in a distillery <laughs> cellar door, isn't it? So how long has your tasting room been here? Um, the tasting room originally was actually an old winery that we, we bought and we turned, turned it into a distillery. So, and How I'm, long ago was that? Oh, it would be getting close to three years. Um, we bought this place because we could continue growing our tequila plants, our Weber Blue Agave Tequiliana plants. On our own Say land. Say that again five times fast. Oh, <laughs> Weber Blue Agave Tequiliana. And that's the correct actual one of 152 varieties of agave plant the that original. you make tequila from. Mm -hmm. And this is the only tequila farm outside Mexico in the whole world. So we are quite unique. That's amazing. Quite different. Piece of the resistance. Ta da! The first tequila ever grown and produced outside Mexico in the world. You've got a champion gin which just won two gold medals. It's a rather nice gin. I might have made it a little strong for you, if you'll forgive Thank me. Thank you very much. And I'm going to have my tequiwi lime, which is a simple uh, lime and kaffir and Tahitian lime liqueur. And I have that with soda. And I, I won't say I live on it, but it's my preferred drink after work. Uh -huh. Something nice and fresh. It's very fresh. It's just easy on a hot day. So, so you, you've got quite a wide range. We've, we've been developing probably close to 20 years mm -hmm. and um, I've even got my own secret stash of whiskey stored away. That's my own 20 year old barrels and things like that. Oh. That's just, it's every boy's dream just to have a barrel of whiskey stored. And ladies. And I have. I oh, ladies too, <laughs> sorry I forgot. But we've, we've developed a range of things right from, you know, different liqueurs, three different gins, vodkas. We even make health drinks. I make uh, honey mead. We've got a unique vodka here. This is the, the party vodka from hell. That means you can just go out and party with this one. And uh, there's nothing like it out there. Is it's, there gold in there? Uh, there is actual floating gold numbers. <laughs> and uh, the, the name means uh, lucky. And the champion gin just got the double gold in uh, mm. Shanghai and silvers in New York. And we do another, another vodka that's stronger. A few little neat drinks like honey lick and various other things. but. Would you like right. to come for a walk? Yeah, let's head to the Cheers. distillery. Cheers. Come on. So you converted this building from a winery into the distillery yourself? Yes, this used to be an old winery, but um, we built new buildings and added on to it. And then we've been starting to stockpile whiskies. Um, mm. I even have a barrel of tequila here. There's some bourbon there that's supposed to be bottled in 1997. Um, just I haven't got around to drinking that yet. Terry, what's going on here? This is Sue. She's my co-distiller. Hi, Sue. And uh, my son Jeremy in the back. He's our sort of man for many talents and mm -hmm. uh, he runs mostly the cellar door for us. Along with my daughter, we've now got quite the family business going on. And luckily they're not big drinkers, so it's been rather nice More that you. You know, the, the stocks have lasted. <laughs> Actually started to run out of stocks of our whiskey, which have been uh, unfortunately selling a wee bit fast for us and we keep, oh, we're just keeping up with this um, but it's a lovely soft rounded um, whiskey aged in honey wine uh, cured barrels uh, that are fresh in from Bulgaria fired wonderful beautiful rounded oak flavors and we're finding that the Bulgarian oak has a, a lot more oak flavor than a lot of the French or the American oak. Bulgarian. Yeah, and oh, it's cool. uh, and it's from Bulgaria. Where are you making the spirits? Come on in here. We're just here? we're just recreating our old distillery, and these are our new stills that we've oh, just. Oh, they're beautiful. We've really just put these in, and we're about to commission them. The whiskey and tequila still here, mm -hmm. 
and the other still will be our rum and vodka still. So we've got a, a, a whole range of things. This is truly the Maserati of stills. This is a dream, and uh, we just want to really drive them. We're really kind of keen to drive them. We, I bet. I got them here and realised they were actually too tall for the roof, so I had to make a hole in my roof oh. just to just to fit them in. And uh, but they have wonderful devices on them, where we can actually free flow the whole the whole flow. They have you can virtually. Um, you know, free flow your dist distillation in these. Manual or you drive. Can, it's, it's manual, yeah, you can just take it out of gear, you might say. <laughs> but it allows you to do sort of seven distillations in one, mm. and it opens up our options for making extremely clean and pure drinks. Mm. Next, Terry's got another surprise to show me. Come on down, I'll give you a little taste out of this barrel here. George. So this is your this whiskey? Is my, this is basically our whiskey. It's been aged in here for at least eight years. And what we've got here is new Bulgarian barrels fired and they're lined with a lovely honey wine that I moved from barrel to barrel. And you um, make that with your own honey? Yes, we make so that with So you're a bee wrangler? A, we're a bee wrangler, kind yeah. of wrangling bees. We, we train our bees to get the right honey. <laughs> I'm going to give you a little taste out of yeah, this. Great. because What this is is technically a straight from the barrel taste of a, a honey single barrel malt whiskey. And here we are. Just run your finger down this and have a little lick of this okay. off the end of your finger. So I just what, yeah, do that'll that? do. Yeah, try that. And it's just okay. it's sixty four percent at least. I'll give you another one. Yeah, I, I that, need to revisit. Yeah. So how long has this been in the barrel? We continually sort of monitor it by just tasting it and then working it. Um, it's a wonderful environment for aging whiskey here because we get warm, nice warm weather. They're going to age faster. That's mm -hmm. why rum has that. You know, that thing mm. going on with the hot hot climates. So you've got your whiskey, you've got your rum, but you have tequila. We have tequila. Would you like to come and see a tequila plantation? I would love to. Then I think we might drive to do this one. Okay. And um, as long as you know you can hold on tight, well let's have a go. Shall I'm ready. We? Cheers. <laughs> let's go. The uh, George, come on for a ride this one. Sure. Make it easy. There we go. Thank you. It's a bit easier than walking for us, okay? <laughs> Here right. we go. I haven't got a license on it. <laughs> so she's looking a bit dry here, George, yeah. at the moment. It's probably not Is as dry as Australia. Dry? No, it's really well our normal summer. We're okay here. There's still quite green grass underneath it. And I and guess the uh, cactuses want to dry. They love it dry. So you've got your babies? George, we planted only these ones probably a few weeks ago. They're only just acclimatising in here. Um, we'll be harvesting one, one bay per year. These will be ready within two to three years. They'll be So started. how big will they grow? They'll get up to about 1.8 metres tall. Okay. And they have a, a very big heart in the bottom of them. It, it can be as heavy as 40 kilos. And like in the middle of the plant? And it's, like a, it's called a piner and it's like a big pineapple. So we cut all the outside leaves off and mm -hmm. that's what we cook for three days in a steam oven uh, versus mezcal which is baked in an oven, tequila is steamed. Right. But this is a Pacific tequila cactus so we tried everything to make it as authentic as we can as far as our processes go and once again nobody has told us the processes um, You've just figured or it out. what yeast to use and... Um, and you and figured this out by... Just, uh, just really, you know, Google it um, <laughs> as part of it, but also, you know, a lot of intuition and a lot mm. of learning and a little bit of sort of just feeling it out as you go. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think I just lucked out and, and got lucky and got it right in the beginning. And that's why we've, you know, made award-winning tequila and mm. um, that we call tequiwi, by the way. Yes. There's something unique about one of our soils the, the climate that we grow it in, it's not on a high plateau like it is in Mexico growing over volcanic soils. Mm -hmm. We're down here on wonderful alluvial soils growing at sea level. So, and we're growing on an island, mm. which is completely different. We don't really know why they're doing so well, but if you look here, this is what's happening to us where you'll get these pups and they're all coming up. Oh. Um, 
They're just um, going they gangbusters. They are going absolutely ballistic in here. They actually love to be strained. We give mm. them a eight hours of drip feed once a week. Otherwise, no fertilizer, no other loving. We come in and talk to them occasionally, <laughs> um, you know. And I, we love coming in here in winter because it's actually lovely and warm. Yeah, it's and pretty it's our, toasty in here. <laughs> it's a, it, we've actually keep blowing thermometers up in here, so that means it's getting up above 40, 45 degrees in here at times. So, and uh, you'd need a lime and soda after that. We do need a lime and soda. And look, let's. I'll take you through and you have a look at the the nursery. Yeah. Where we, we were developing them all. Mm -hmm. And come on with me. So you're not just growing agave? No, we, we grow a lot of plants for landscaping the property with as well. There's more of the seedlings for the tequila, yes. which are all of these wonderful rows here. We really enjoy the fact that we actually landscape ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't buy plants in. We grow all plants for the place. A lot of these things right down to banana trees, um, bird of paradise plants. Uh, there's um, So you there's propagate these yourself? Propagate these ourselves, yeah. Amazing. Well, I'm blown away with everything Terry is doing here in Golden Bay and learning about how he makes his spirits is making me want to taste them even more. And what better way to start than with the tequiwi. Here it is. So this is your 100% agave spirit. This is exactly what it is. We call it tequiwi rather than tequila. Mm -hmm. it, it was a learning curve because we had some very basic concepts of what to do with it. But we, we muddled through and... You had some fairly I, basic equipment too. I would call it very basic. We started <laughs> off with a an oven that I built that was, there's a tequila for you. you. The oven that I built was three metres long, um, a steam oven, and we would cut the hearts from the truck from the plants out and put them in there to cook it. They would stay in there for three days. We then put them into a garden mulcher. And once <laughs> like again, just your a standard, standard garden mulcher, garden because mulcher. in Mexico they have a very big uh, mangles that they put them through. From the garden mulcher after it was cooked, we then actually put it in the ringer washing machine because we had to get the fibres out. Like an old school. Like grandma's ringer washing machine. And we we then felt around with our arms. We actually used um, artificial insemination gloves because we had to be right up to our elbows in this and tie them at the back. And the process was kind of weird because you'd be working in this area and your whole face could go numb from some element in the in the brew. In the agave? Yeah, yeah we called it numb lips. <laughs> and because you could stand there and talk, but your lips weren't moving. But, could... but from there, we created a, a wonderful brew, and that was then put into a tank to, um, to ferment, mm -hmm. and from there we then put it into the still. But please, try a, try a little taste of yeah. it. I'll give you something that's lovely to follow it, okay. which will be my tangelo liqueur, mm -hmm. um, made from our local tangelos. It's a mellow kind of. It's a very soft, soft rounded mm. flavour and many, many things that are different about that tequila. How's the taste? It's so easy to drink. It's too smooth, huh? It's so smooth. And just put that on your tongue now after we taste the tequila and tell me what you feel. Okay. It rounds out. Woo! Doesn't that round out a it's tequila? It's a nice citrusy little... Yeah, so we, we blast. It's kind of mm. got that little edge of the Mexican lime going on. Mm. But now just keep sipping your tequila and keep sipping that. Okay. And, um, and tell us about this. This is the... Ta Tangelo is a, is a lovely liqueur that we make. It's one of many. It's called, it's a tequila liqueur, so it goes with the tequila itself. And it's got honey. It's got a little bit of edge of honey going mm. on with it. But what it really is is tangelos, which are a cross between a grapefruit and a mandarin. Mm. And we patiently make a wine from that that we then turn into a liqueur. It's lighter than that though. It's yeah, got... it's not so sweet, mm. it's not so sickly, mm. but I, I love it to have beside my tequila as I sip the two of them. Mm. And it's it's almost like a two glass cocktail, mm. um, except you know you don't mix them, you're just tasting the pure form of it's each one. It's a deconstructed cocktail. It's a deconstructed cocktail. And then we've got a, a lovely gin made from New Zealand Botanicals. Yeah, so this is the one that you've used. What we was use the... totra berries. We take the, the berries from a female totra tree and it's no easy task to tell which is the girl and which is the boy in the female totra trees. <laughs> but the totra berry is very much of a, a, it's very like a juniper berry. We also have kakatea berries in here. Those are just two of the little botanicals and things that we use from our forest in New Zealand. Um, so this is really giving a sense of place. It's, and... it's, our, it's our local gin. Mm. But this you'll find is, is quite an interesting soft gin. Quite different, eh? Yeah. 
It is. And we've got a lot of places that are making what I call lollipop gins, where they're you know, flavoured with something pink or they're flavoured with some other flavour, hiding the gin. Mm. The gin is a clean, precise drink. Mm. It is not made really to be lollipop. Mm. I've well, got a whole range of This would go them. really well in a dry martini, actually. It actually makes a great martini. Mm. Um, we create these lovely drinks from what's within our environment, mm. uh, rather than trying to um, search the world for the rarest you know, thing you can put into your drink and make that. We want to make things from our terroir mm. here. We don't want to copy. We want to make uniquely New Zealand drinks. Hence, we're, our whiskey is very much a New Zealand whiskey. Yeah. There's a lovely whiskey for you to try. Mm. New concept of a very old drink. Mm. You get those those honey notes. On it's, this. it's it's an extremely delicate whiskey. Mm. I may join you for one of those. Actually. Yeah, come on. I think that's what I should have. I think so. So cheers. Cheers. And really nice to meet you, and yeah. thank you for coming to visit us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs>